Do you really remember your past? Have you ever noticed how strange memory is? One moment, you can recall something from years ago in vivid detail, like the comforting smell of your grandmother's kitchen, or the way your childhood best friend laughed. But then, there are moments that seem to vanish completely, like they never even happened. Why do some memories stick while others fade away? Here's something even crazier. Your brain doesn't store memories like a camera or a hard drive. Every time you remember something, your brain rewrites little details, sometimes changing the story entirely. That means the past you think you remember might not even be real. Think about it. If your memories are constantly being reshaped, how much of your past is actually true? And if your past shapes who you are, does that mean your identity is shifting without you even realizing it? French philosopher Henry Bergson had some pretty radical ideas about this. He believed that memory isn't just about recalling things. It actually affects who you are, the choices you make, and even how you see reality. According to Bergson, memory comes in two forms. One, pure memory. This is like deep storage for everything you've ever experienced, though you can't always access it. Two, habit memory. The automatic stuff you do without thinking, like riding a bike or tying your shoes. But here's where it gets really interesting. Your habit memory influences your choices, feelings, and beliefs without you even realizing it. That means the way you react to things today might not be based on the present moment, but on old memories buried deep in your past. So, what if your memories aren't really yours? What if they're just versions of the past? that your brain has rewritten again and again? And if that's true, can you change your memories to reshape your future? Stick around, because by the end of this video, you might start questioning everything you think you remember. Most of us think of memory as a storage box. You tuck away experiences and when you need them, you retrieve them exactly as they were. But that's not how memory actually works. Henri Bergson had a different perspective. He argued that memory isn't just about recalling the past. It actively shapes how we experience the present and influences the choices we make for the future. His idea is simple but profound. Your past isn't fixed. It changes each time you remember it. Bergson identified two distinct types of memory, each playing a different role in shaping your life. The first is pure memory, which acts as a deep storage system, holding every experience you've ever had. It doesn't just store facts, it keeps emotions, sensations, and subconscious details as well. The catch is that you don't always have direct access to it. Sometimes, it resurfaces unexpectedly, like when a song suddenly brings back a childhood moment. The second type is habit memory, the automatic memory that runs your life without you even realizing it. It's what lets you ride a bike without thinking, type your phone password without looking, or react emotionally to situations in ways you don't fully understand. Bergson believed that habit memory is the most powerful because it operates in the background, shaping your personality, your choices, and even your emotional responses without you knowing. Most of the decisions you make today aren't purely based on logic or conscious thought. Instead, they're influenced by deeply buried memories. Have you ever met someone and instantly disliked them? even though they did nothing wrong? That could be your habit memory recognizing something familiar from a past bad experience. Have you ever felt nervous about trying something new, like public speaking or learning a new skill? That could be your brain recalling a past failure, even if you don't consciously remember it. Your mind is wired to avoid pain. If a past experience hurt you, your subconscious holds on to it, even if you've forgotten the details. That's why fears, anxieties and limiting beliefs can take root without you ever knowing where they came from. Bergson argued that your past isn't just something you remember. It's something that's actively shaping your present and creating your future. And the most unsettling part? Most of this happens without your awareness. If memories aren't fixed, that means they can be reshaped. And if you can change how you remember the past, you can change your future. One way to do this is by questioning your old beliefs. The next time fear or self-doubt creeps in, ask yourself, 
Where is this coming from? Is this fear actually real, or is it just an old memory influencing me? Another way is to reframe past failures. Instead of seeing a bad experience as proof that you're not good enough, view it as a lesson that made you stronger. You can also expose yourself to new experiences. Habit memory is built through repetition. By creating new patterns and experiences, you can gradually replace old, limiting ones. Bergson believed that the past doesn't control you. You control how you remember it. And if you can change how you remember the past, you can change your future. Henry Bergson had these ideas over a century ago, but here's what's fascinating. Modern neuroscience is proving him right. For a long time, people believed that memories were like snapshots of the past, stored permanently in the brain. But now, we know that the brain doesn't store exact copies of events. Instead, it reconstructs them each time you recall them. So every time you remember something, your brain isn't just retrieving it, it's rewriting it. This means that the past you remember today isn't the same as the past you remembered five years ago. Every time you tell a story about your past, you're probably altering small details without realizing it. And since the brain naturally fills in missing gaps with assumptions, some of your memories might not even be real. This explains why two people can recall the same event differently. It also means that if your brain keeps changing the past, your memories are shaping your future in ways you may not even be aware of. Have you ever been absolutely sure about something from your past, only to find out later that it didn't happen the way you thought? This is known as the false memory effect, and it happens because memory isn't a fixed recording. It's a story your brain continuously edits. There are several ways false memories are created. Emotions reshape memories, meaning the stronger an emotion felt during an event, the more likely it is that the memory will be distorted over time. Repetition also alters memories, as each time you recall an event, your brain slightly modifies it. And external influences can change memory as well. If someone repeatedly tells you a story about an event, you might eventually believe you were there, even if you weren't. This supports Bergson's idea that memory is alive, constantly evolving, and shaping who you are. Even more fascinating is the idea that most of your behaviors today are shaped by memories you don't even remember. There's a type of memory that works below conscious awareness. Scientists call it implicit memory, but Bergson's idea of habit memory describes it well. For example, if a child was constantly ignored growing up, their brain stores that experience as a memory of not being important. As an adult, they might struggle with low self-worth, even if they don't consciously remember being ignored. If someone was embarrassed while speaking in class as a child, their brain might form the belief that speaking in public is dangerous, leading to a lifelong fear of public speaking. The most surprising part? Most people don't remember these experiences clearly, but the emotional impact lingers. This means that many fears, insecurities, and behaviors aren't based on reality, but rather on how the brain stored past experiences. If memories are constantly changing, then the question is, can we use this to our advantage? The answer is yes, and modern psychology is proving it. One way to do this is by reframing how you remember past events. If you recall a failure as something painful, Try seeing it differently. Instead of thinking, I failed and embarrassed myself, try thinking, that moment helped me grow and improve. Another way is to challenge old beliefs formed through habit memory. If you've always told yourself, I'm bad at this or I can't do that, ask yourself, where did this belief come from? Is it based on truth or is it just an outdated memory influencing you? you can also visualize a new version of the past. Studies show that the brain doesn't always distinguish between real memories and imagined ones. If you repeatedly visualize yourself succeeding at something instead of failing, your brain can start to accept that new version as reality. Bergson's idea was clear. Memory isn't a fixed record of the past. It's an active force that shapes your present and future. If that's true, then by changing the way you remember things, 
you can reshape your identity, your fears, and even your future. Have you ever considered how much of your personality is shaped by your memories? If you see yourself as a confident person, it's probably because you remember past moments where you succeeded. If you believe you're bad at something, it's likely because a memory of failure has stuck with you. If you think you're unlucky in life, it might be because your brain tends to recall the bad experiences while ignoring the good ones. But what if your memories aren't entirely accurate? What if they've been reshaped over time and are now influencing how you see yourself in ways that aren't even true? Bergson believed that memory isn't just a part of your identity. It is your identity. The way you remember yourself is the way you perceive yourself, which means that if your memories change, your entire self-perception can change too. Your relationships, whether romantic, friendships, or family, are also shaped by your past experiences. Have you ever instantly connected with someone while feeling uneasy around another person for no clear reason? That's your habit memory at work. If you experience betrayal in a past relationship, your brain remembers that pain and might make you more suspicious in future relationships, even when there's no real reason. If you were often ignored as a child, your brain might make you extra sensitive to rejection, making it hard to express yourself in relationships. If a friendship ended badly, you might subconsciously hesitate to trust new people, even if you don't realize why. The truth is, we don't react to people as they are. We react to them based on what they remind us of. Memory also plays a huge role in decision-making. Why do some people take risks while others hesitate? Why do some people jump at new opportunities while others hold themselves back? It often comes down to the memories influencing their decisions. If someone has mostly positive past experiences, their brain expects more good things to happen. But if someone has experienced a lot of failure or disappointment, their brain expects more of the same, and that expectation can make them hesitant to act. The tricky part is that this process happens unconsciously. You don't actively think, I failed before, so I won't try again. Instead, your habit memory triggers feelings of fear or self-doubt before you're even aware of it. This is why so many people struggle with things like public speaking, trying new things, or starting new relationships. Their brain is recalling past embarrassments, failures, or heartbreaks, even when those past events no longer have any real power over them. But the truth is, just because something happened before doesn't mean it will happen again. If memory has so much control over our lives, can we change it? The answer is yes. There are simple ways to reprogram your memory to shape a new future. One way is to rewrite negative stories. The next time you remember a failure, try shifting your perspective. Instead of saying, I was terrible at that, try saying, that experience taught me something valuable. Another method is to train your brain to focus on past successes instead of failures. If your brain automatically recalls negative moments, consciously remind yourself of times you succeeded before making a decision. You can also create new positive memories by taking small steps to change your behavior. Since habit memory is built through repetition, new experiences can slowly replace old ones. If you're afraid of public speaking, practice talking to yourself in the mirror. If you struggle with trust, remind yourself of moments when trust worked out. Small, repeated actions can rewire your brain over time. Bergson believed that memory is an active force. It can keep you stuck or it can help you grow. It all depends on how you choose to use it. Let's take a step back and look at everything we've uncovered. Memory isn't just a record of the past. It's a force shaping your present and future. Your memories aren't always accurate. They change over time, and your brain even fills in gaps with false details. Your identity is built on the memories you focus on. If you see yourself a certain way, it's not because of objective facts. It's because of how you remember your past. Think about it. If you believe you're bad at something, it's likely because a memory of failure has stuck with you. If you think you're unlucky in life, it might be because your brain is wired to recall the bad experiences while ignoring the good ones. But what if those memories aren't even entirely accurate? 
What if they've been reshaped over time and are now influencing how you see yourself in ways that aren't even true? Here's the most important part. You are not controlled by your past. Since memory is constantly evolving, you can choose to reshape the way you recall events, and in doing so, reshape your future. Henri Bergson's ideas tell us something incredibly powerful. The past isn't fixed. It's a story you keep telling yourself. And the best part? You can change the way you tell it. If memory shapes identity, then imagine what happens when you actively shift the way you think about your past. Instead of saying, I've always been bad at this, try saying, I struggled before, but I'm learning and improving. Instead of believing, that moment in my past defines me. Remind yourself. That was just one chapter of my story, but I decide what happens next. This is more than just positive thinking. It's a fundamental shift in how you see yourself. When you rewrite the way you remember your past, you create a different version of yourself in the present. Instead of letting old failures, fears, or disappointments define you, you can choose to reinterpret those memories in a way that helps you grow. Memory isn't just about recalling facts. It's about constructing meaning. Two people can go through the exact same experience, but the way they remember it will shape their future in completely different ways. One person might see a failure as proof they should never try again, while another sees it as an opportunity to learn and improve. The difference isn't in the event itself. It's in the way memory has been framed. So here's the real challenge. What if you could start shaping your memories in a way that supports your growth rather than holds you back? Take a moment and ask yourself, what are the memories that define me? Are they helping me grow or are they holding me back? If I could change one thing about how I remember my past, what would it be? The key isn't to deny the past or pretend bad experiences didn't happen. It's about shifting your focus, finding the lessons, and choosing to emphasize the parts of your story that empower you. You are not just a collection of past events. You are the storyteller. And if you change the way you look at your past, your entire future can change with it. Imagine this. A person who believes they are unlucky in love because of past heartbreaks will approach new relationships with fear, hesitation, or even self-sabotage. But what if they shifted their memory? What if they saw those past experiences as lessons that prepared them for something better? Suddenly, their entire outlook on relationships and their future experiences could change. Or consider someone who has always seen themselves as bad at a certain skill. Maybe they struggled with math in school, so they labeled themselves as not a numbers person. That memory then influenced every future experience with numbers, reinforcing the belief. But what if they reframed that memory? What if instead of seeing it as proof of failure, they saw it as just a moment where they needed more practice? By doing so, they open the door to new possibilities. Rewriting your memories doesn't mean erasing reality. It means choosing how to interpret it. And once you start doing that, you take control over your own narrative. You can rewrite your story. You can choose which memories to focus on. And by doing so, you can reshape your future. Now I want to hear from you. Have you ever had a memory resurface and change the way you saw something? Do you believe your past is shaping your future more than you realized? Comment below and share your thoughts. And if this video made you think differently about memory, hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Let's keep exploring the mysteries of the mind, reality, and human nature together. I'll see you in the next video.